Sup guys over to here. In this video we're going to be talking about differences between L1 and L2 chains in terms of airdrops. As you may remember yesterday Linea announced that it's moving into the main net and today I wake up and I see all sorts of weird stuff on Twitter and Telegram and different groups like on Discord everywhere. Basically people are being completely clueless about a lot of stuff like some people are frustrated that there is no token on the mainnet alpha launch that ETH is going to be used as a gas token as there are other alternatives and most importantly people seriously comparing L2 airdrops to L1 airdrops like comparing Linea to SUI for example and so here I want in basic terms to discuss what are the key differences uh, between L1 and L2 chains in that regard. Also everything I say in this video is completely subjective. It's my personal point of view. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. And also regarding the term airdrop, first of all, uh, we gonna use it in the sense of initial token airdrop, not like seasonal stuff. And we're only gonna be talking about L1 and L2 chains not like DAPS airdrops, because DAPS airdrops and seasonal airdrops, this is the totally different topic. Okay, let's start. There is no preparation. As you can see, I'm gonna be using the good old paint. Doesn't really matter. The explanations are pretty simple. So we're gonna start with an L1. And let's just for the L1 example, uh, use some theoretical chain. This is not actual say chain, some theoretical say chain. And by the way, say is probably the next L1 airdrop, or maybe they're gonna do sale similar to SUI, we'll see. So this is L1. What does L1 need to function? It needs gas token. What gas token is being used on L1 chains? The native token. So we're gonna have say token. The next question is when you're gonna have it. And the answer is pretty simple. You need, you must actually, you must have it when you launch the mainnet. Basically the same way you must have testnet say in this case when you launch testnet. Because if there is no native token in which you pay gas, you cannot pay gas. Therefore you cannot do any transactions. So in this case, your token must exist on day one. It must exist. So we have just say some tokenomics. This is the whole supply of the token and there must be an initial supply of the token. So it's usually not much. That's gonna be the initial supply. Usually investors, team, like marketing, etc. it's being paid sometime in the future. And so initially you only have this small portion of tokens and you need to distribute that portion of tokens in order to start to kick off basically this chain. So people have this token and they can actually do transactions. And there are several ways how you're gonna distribute that. You can do a sale call it sale, call it pre-sale, or you can do an airdrop. And excuse my drawing skills, this is an airdrop. You can do some hybrid solutions, for example, sale is not always like a straight up sale, like look at Sui for example, because some people are legit mad that Mr. Labs didn't do the airdrop, but if you look at the outcome, for the people that actually got the allocation at 3 cents for the SUI token for 1.5k tokens, these people, if they sold day one, as they probably should, they made more than 2k. And so in some cases, for some people, that was better than Arbitrum airdrop. But going back to the main point here, for L1, you need to have the token. And secondly, this token must be launched when you launch the mainnet. And therefore, these sales, airdrops, and other stuff of distributing this token must happen on the day of the launch or before the day of the launch. And let's just say that the team decides to do an airdrop or some sort of hybrid sale. But for the ease here, we're going to say airdrop. Okay, how are you going to determine who's eligible for the airdrop? By previous interactions, by previous transactions, they happen on testnet. 
So it could have been transactions, it could have been some social interaction, interactions, some social campaigns, but the point in time that decided whether or not you're going to be eligible happened during testnet, which actually makes hunting for L1 error drops easier than L2 error drops, because here you're only spending your time, you're doing transactions on the testnet, you're not really paying for the gas with real money. Now I'm going to remove that one and here we're going to put L2s and for L2s what do we have? We kind of have Optimism, we got Arbitrum, these are in, in the mainnet, we got ZK Sync, that's already also in the mainnet. Next chain that's coming, this is Linear, then it's going to be Scroll. After scroll, we don't know who's gonna go into the mainnet, maybe Tycho, maybe somebody else will actually swoop in. And for the sake of this argument, we don't really care which L2 types it is. Optimistic rollup, ZK rollup, doesn't matter. We're just saying that this is L2. Actually, let me add OP BNB here, because it's the only one that's gonna be on top of different chain from the Ethereum. I delete the L1 part so it's easier to see. We're also going to have testnet and the mainnet for the L2 compared to L1. It's using the native token of their parent chain for gas. So for all of these chains, they're using what? They're using ETH. And same goes for the mainnet. These chains utilize ETH as a token to pay the gas. And if we take the case of OP BNB, it's not gonna utilize other token. It's gonna utilize BNB token to pay the gas. And this BNB token is gonna be bridged from the L1 BNB chain. Okay, so we established that. You don't need to create separate token for the blockchain to remain functional. And you can actually delete the testnet from this equation because there is no point, especially in the testnet, to create another token. So let's focus on the mainnet. Again, we already established that the blockchain is going to be completely functional. Then the next question is, do you need to have the token of this particular chain? And the answer is very simple, no. You don't need to have the token. That's the biggest difference in L2 versus L1. You don't need to create this token. Why Arbitrum has token. Optimism has token. Probably ZK Sync gonna have token. Arbitrum token. It does exist. Does it change this? After the launch? No. The gas fees are still paid in ETH. And this token acts as governance token. I mean, you can create different uses, but ultimately it does not have to exist. But in most cases, I think why it's a good idea and why people do that, creating another token for the chain as a governance token, first of all. And more importantly, you can quickly get some money when you launch the token. So you can pay your investors in some time in the future. Your team is getting paid. Some of your community members getting paid and again decentralization if you want to achieve it. It's not always the case that people want to achieve it. Now we're going to move into possible outcomes. So, so first of all, we established that on L2s, everything happens during the mainnet. Case number one, there's going to be no token, no token, case closed. If there is no token, there is obviously no airdrop and I'm going to clear more space. And this is going to be scenario two. There is a token. Ta-da! Let's answer some questions regarding this token. First, well, this token is going to be launched. And here it obviously depends on the team, on the network conditions, on all that stuff, how this token is going to be utilized. So your potential time frame is huge. It's very wide. Next, let's just say that we arrived at this point in time with this token about to be created. So there are two possibilities here. The possibility number one, no airdrop whatsoever. So it doesn't matter, we mostly care about this scenario where team decides to do an airdrop of some kind. And so then we arrive at the next question. Okay, what's gonna be eligibility criteria? Well, that's also gonna depend on team, but you can actually argue and rightfully so, that your mainnet contribution 
is going to heavily outweigh the testnet contribution, even if testnet contribution is going to be taken into account. Because in some cases, I think some team going to rely solely on the mainnet and like maybe, maybe bits of actions from the testnet. And I'm not saying that's always the case because testnet actions can also give you some benefits. But in general, when hunting for the L2 airdrops, your main actions are on the main net. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't do anything on the test net because not only have the chance to get something from the chain itself, you're also interacting with different dApps and you may get some rewards from that dApp in the future too from your actions on the test net. But going back to the comparison, between L2s and L1s. In L1s, when you're doing stuff on testnet, you're expecting the rewards. On L2, when you're doing stuff on the testnet, don't expect anything really. Your main strategy is still gonna come on the mainnet because every L2 mainnet gonna have at least several months before they're gonna drop the token if this token is gonna be, exist at all. And so when people actually expect something from their testnet activities, on L2 chains, when these L2 chains go into the main net, it's just sad. It's sad because people clearly don't understand how this works, unfortunately. We see that stuff with Linear now, we're gonna see the same stuff pretty much sure with the scroll when it launches, probably in August. If I forgot to mention something, be sure to comment down below. And if you got until this point, thank you very much for watching. Please like and share this video, this will help a lot. Subscribe if you still haven't and I'll see you next time.